family. What's happening? I'm Dewan J, the founder of Kavu Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey as we travel through the word of God. I pray that what you're about to hear adds a blessing to your life, to your mind, to your heart, and let that transform to the work of your hands. Thank you. You are not here by accident. If this video blesses you, I pray that you will just text it or email it or share the link to somebody. We will see you in there. Remember, without vision, the people will perish. Let's dive into the word of God. In today's society, in today's life, we we have come to a, a place of materialism. Due to uh, empires being conquered, due to capitalism, due to everybody in search and in service of self. The problem that we have with that is that there's no room anymore in anybody's lives for God. We, we think it's enough to just uh, follow a Bible app plan. We think it's enough to just uh, follow uh, some devotionals that somebody else gave you. And a lot of people are just skimming through the messages and they're not understanding what is actually happening. They're not processing the love. They're not processing the power. They're not processing the empathy, the compassion and the grace. Yet we come on social media and, and play. We come on social media and, and we go to church and, and these things have now become uh, like Halloween. We have Halloween every Sunday. We put on a mask of being saved. We put on a mask of, of being Christians. We put on a mask of, of what we feel the public wants to see God worshiped, God loved. But it's, it's, it's one way to get there. Lexi, what's happening? It's one way to get there. And, and, and that's through the reading and the understanding of his word. That is seeking first the kingdom of heaven. That is the only way to get there. So I'd like to introduce this series. Those of y'all who know um, the, the other side, right? The coaching side. You know, I like to talk in series. And I'd like to introduce this series entitled Oil, Obedience, and Opportunity. Oil, Obedience, and Opportunity. Every kiss begins with K. What's happening? Welcome in. Oil, Obedience, and Opportunity. Um, if, if you are reading along, we will be coming from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Um, and I'd like to talk uh, today from the subject, when the oil is all that you have. When the oil is all that you have. Um, if you have a Bible app, if you have a second device, if you have a paper Bible, um, I'm going to read this out and then we're, we're, we're going to talk about it. Now, there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets who came unto Elijah and he's saying, she said, thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest thy servant did fear the Lord and the creditor is come to take upon him my two sons as bondsmen. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, thine handmaid hath not a thing. Save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad from all of thy neighbors. When the vessels are, uh, borrow the empty vessels and borrow not a few. This is going to be important later. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy sons, and thou shalt pour into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him. And shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she and her sons said, Bring me more vessels. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil, pay the debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Um... There's a couple things that we have to get into into this story. Because in this series, Oil, Obedience, and Opportunity, we have to realize that this is the formula to live the Christian life. Karma, or Carmen, good evening. This is the formula to live the Christian life. Now, when we're looking at this formula to live life, the, the beautiful thing about this news is that two of these things actually belong to God and only one belong to us. 
It's amazing how this formula comes to be because with God's anointing, our obedience, God then can open opportunity. The oil belongs to God. The opportunity is open by God. And the only thing required of us in this walk is for us to be obedient. It's amazing how opportunities open when we're obedient. It's amazing how blessings flow when we're obedient. It's amazing how uh, we feel full of the heart when we're obedient. Let's break it down. Let's define our terms. The oil, biblically speaking, it represents anointing. It represents healing. It represents power. It represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. God anointed. Thank you for the uh, lightning bolt. God anointed the priest in the beginning. When God anointed kings over his chosen people, there was oil used. When, when uh, people were buried, there was oil used. Praying for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, something very specific about the oil that was used in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, excuse me, in the Old Testament, something very specific. It was olive oil. Why? We know that the olive branch is a symbol or an extension or an offer for peace. But there's something very specific about the olive. And this olive was actually representative of, of Jesus atoning for our sins. The oil, when hanging on the branch, is a very bitter. Much like the passion, much like Jesus being dragged through a kangaroo court, much like him being whipped 40 times, much like him being mocked and scorned by people that he considered to be his own, much like his hands being nailed to the cross. This was a bitter, bitter pill to swallow for many people. People uh, were displeased. People were crying. People were weeping. Those that were followers of him. It caused the people to sin. This is how bitter this thing was. But. In order to turn this into the sweet oil that it is, it has to be crushed. When Jesus was crushed in the flesh, it released the sweet oil of redemption. It, re it released the sweet oil of salvation. It released the sweet oil of us being able to be with him in eternity forever. And this is the symbology that was used by the Bible to articulate the, the coming of Christ and the coming of redemption. Oil opportunity. They book in obedience, much like God is the alpha and omega, much like he is the beginning, walking in purpose, walking in the will of God, walking in what it is that you were called here to do starts with the anointing. You provide the obedience and God opens the doors. God opens the opportunity. It's amazing when you put these three O's together, how abundance happens, how life happens. How healing happens, how protection happens, how deliverance happens. And because God likes to flex, he did the same thing in nature. The, the, the compound in science, O3, is ozone. It's O3, right? The three O's, oxygen times three, it, it, it represents the ozone level. When you put three oxygen molecules together, it is ozone. What does the ozone layer do for us? It stops us from being burned by the sun. It stops us from being burned by the fires of hell. It stops us from being burned by the enemy's attacks. It stopped us from being burned and, and killed and giving cancer and cataracts inside of our eyes because the O3, once there's oil, obedience and opportunity, nothing formed against you shall be able to prosper. Here she is. She cries unto the prophet Elijah. And, and this woman I can identify with. I can identify with this woman because uh, this woman was a, a wife of a prophet. This is a woman who, who uh, lived her life in service to God. And here she is coming to the man of God. Here she is coming to the prophet, trying to figure out how did I get to this state? My, my husband was a prophet. This is much like us in today's society. We go to church every day. We tithe. We pray. We fast. Yet we can barely seem to outrun problems, barely seem to outrun debts, barely seem to outrun anxiety, barely able to outrun depression. Yet I go to church. 
every Sunday, every Saturday, whatever your Adventist day is. We drag ourselves out of bed and we, we put on something and we start to put on the mask of what Christianity should look like. We start to put on the mask of what we think people think Christians should look like. We put the bumper sticker on our car. We put the Jesus fish on our car and we fail to realize that on the inside we are dying. And much like this woman, we have to ask ourselves, how? How did I get here? Well, she got here because there was a debt that was owed. Much like Jesus died on the cross for our sins, there was a debt that was owed. Her husband, her husband was a prophet inside of the company of prophets. Now, here's the crazy thing about this. This widow's husband was Obadiah. This was this widow's husband was Obadiah. And what happened was when Jezebel introduced Baal to the children of Israel. Right. The she started to kill all of God's prophets. So the company of prophets had to hide. The company of the prophets had to hide. So Obadiah hid them 100 of them inside of two caves. And because because he didn't have money to feed the prophets that he was hiding out. He borrowed money and he died and this debt then passed to his family. So now here we are. This woman whose husband had to run into hiding. Here we are. This woman left inheriting a debt. Now here we are. This debt collector. This debt collector coming to collect. She's been faithful. I'm all yours. Good evening. She, the debt collector's coming to collect. When now we say, why, why would this, why, why would this situation befall this woman of God? Why would this situation? Befall this servant. Why would this situation, God is to love what's happening. Why would this situation come to her? Much like ourselves. Why is it that I can't uh, uh, win the lottery? Why is it that I can't be a millionaire? Why is it that, that, that problems fall me? Why is it that I'm in the abusive relationship? Why is it that I can't find the husband I've been praying for? Why is it that uh, the sexual assault had to happen to me? Why is it that I had to miscarriage in the stillborn baby? Why is it that I was born into the family that I was born in when I've been nothing but a faithful servant to God? Why is it that this happened to me? And God says, you've been in good hands the entire time. Verse two. Verse two. Elisha said, and Elisha, he didn't react the way that I thought that he was going to react. We're talking about Elisha. We're talking about double portion Elisha. We're talking split the river Elisha. We're talking uh, raising the dead Elisha. We're talking multiplying food Elisha. And all he says to her was, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What's in your house? And, and the woman said, I have nothing in my house. D slam was happening. I have nothing in my house except a pot of oil. Here's, here's where it gets good. Might I submit to you that this widow actually married the right man? Might I submit to you that this widow actually married a man that should have, uh, that, that led her and left her with the only thing that she ever needed? Too many times in today's society, we put too much value we put too much value inside of materialistic things. We put too much value inside of our relationships. We put too much value inside of things that are going to pass away, things that are going to leave us, things that seem trivial. He left her with the oil. Now, if what we believe in the Bible is true, and it is, then our heart is is the house of the Holy Spirit. And I can imagine in a desperate situation, a lot of us don't want to hear 
Bible verses. A lot of us don't want to hear cliches. A lot of us don't want to hear uh, something that sounds good, something that was pre-planned for us to get to. A lot of us don't want to hear these things. We want to know how it is that we're supposed to get out of this situation, but the, who you are connected to will leave you with what you need. Okay. He left her with the oil. I can imagine when she said she had a pot of oil in her house, Elisha's face probably lit up. It probably lit up. Our house is the heart of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and when her husband died, she was left with a debt. But she was left with a hole in her heart. She didn't go jumping from bed to bed. She didn't go looking for sob stories on social media. She didn't go blaming and getting angry at God for taking something from her. Instead, she chose to live. Instead, she, she leaned into her belief system and she went to the only place that she knew that she could get help. But what did he do? He turned it right back to what was on the inside of her house. The oil was already on the inside of her house. When your car breaks down, when your red bottoms break or they're out of season, when your handbags are no longer in season, when your Javinci is no longer in season, when you be uh, texting and pulling out the black book and going from bed to bed, house to house, how many times are you going to Netflix and chill? When all of these things go away, God said, I'm still here. The couch was gone. The furniture was gone. The dining room table was gone. No food inside of her cabinets was gone, but God said that I am still here. He left, her husband left her with the only thing that matters. And this is why it's important, ladies, for y'all to stop looking for a man to date and worry about the mandate on the man. This is why it's important for you to link up with somebody that's a good follower of God. This is why it's important for you to link up with somebody who has some covering. This is why it's important for you to link up with somebody who has some God about them. And this is why when you get that relationship in his friends, family, romantic relationships, when you get inside of a relationship, we need to ensure that there's a little oil in between to reduce the friction. We need to make sure that God is in the center of these relationships relationships because when these relationships are at odds when there's a little friction all we have to do is imply oh, okay all we have to do is apply the oil all we have to do is apply the oil but something very important happened here something very important happened here notice how she sold all of her furniture she she sold everything that belonged to her. This is what happens when we try and fix things ourselves. We find ourselves in desperate situations. We find ourselves in desperate situations when we try and fix things ourselves. And this is why it came down to the oil. When you're in a, a, a spiritually desperate situation, when you're in an emotionally desperate situation, it does not matter how big your house is. It doesn't matter how many cars are inside of your driveway. It doesn't matter how many times you can swipe the Amex. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many flights you can take. It doesn't matter how many Habibis you can have. It does not matter when you're in a desperate situation. She tried to fix it herself and notice when the instruction from God came. Notice when it came. She said, I have nothing except the oil. It takes acknowledgement. It takes acknowledgement. God is always there. But it takes acknowledgement. The reason, the reason that it seems that a lot of our prayers go unanswered. The reason that it seems that a lot of our prayers go unheard. The reason that it seems as if God is not listening is because we treat God like a slot machine. We, we only call on him when we, when we need him. We only call on him when we're hurting. We're only calling on him when we need deliverance. But God said, I am always here. I am always here. We have to stop treating. Bob, my father's business, what's happening? Sovereign Mac, what's happening? We have to stop treating God like a slot machine and only acknowledging him when we notice that we're missing things. Notice when the instruction from God came. It's when she acknowledged the fact that she had the oil. And I need somebody out there today. 
Whoever's going to hear this, I need you today to turn and acknowledge the presence of God. I need you to turn and acknowledge the power of God, the healing power, the providing power, the, the battle fighting power of God. When you acknowledge God, he will give the instruction. You want to know why you can't hear God's voices because you haven't acknowledged him. We think we acknowledge him. We think we acknowledge him. We, we throw we throw the Christian mask on when we're in public. How are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. We throw it on when we go to church. Brother Guan, how you doing today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly. God is the provider. God treats me. We, 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 we throw these cliches out here as if it was something to play with. People's opinions People's perspectives, people, period, have no heaven or hell to put you in. And as a result of that, they can't create anything for you. So why cap? Why put the mask on in public when I'm hurting? How are you doing? Oh, I need prayer. I need, to, I need to go on a fast. I need, to, I need to get somewhere where God can hear me. We feel like He's so far away, but the oil has always been in your house. The anointing has always been in your heart. The anointing has always been over your life. The calling and the purpose did not go anywhere. But what happens is when we fail to acknowledge God, we allow the enemy to sneak in and reposition and reposition our ear and reposition our mindsets where it seems like God's so far away. But, but truth of the matter is when you hide God's word, when you hide God's love inside of your heart and you cherish it like a baby, God is so close that he can hear you say, help me. He hears the whispers. But when we fail to acknowledge the oil, we don't get the instruction. We don't get it. Verse three, Elijah says, uh, go get some vessels, go get some vessels, borrow them from your neighbors, borrow not a few, go get some vessels, uh, uh, go, go talk to your neighbors, get all of the empty vessels they have. Now, now here it is like in this time, in this time period, um, when, when oil and, and bottles and things of this nature were empty, they were, t they tend to got thrown out. They, they tend to got thrown away. And, and, and for the person who feels neglected, for the person who feels empty on the inside, for the person who's heartbroken and find themselves in a desperate situation, God said, give me that emptiness. God said, give me that brokenness. Give me something that everybody else has thrown away. Give me what it is that you think has no use. Give me what it is that you think have no value. Give me the emptiness and watch me fill it. Okay. He, he said, he said, go, go get, go get it. Go get the empty vessels, borrow them from your neighbors uh, and, and, and then shut, shut the doors. Shut the doors. Now, here's what, here's what Elisha knew. Here's what Elisha knew. He knew that this woman bared fruits of being a good Christian. <clears throat> he knew that she acknowledged God. He knew that she had an enjoyable disposition. He knew that the fruits of the spirit were evident in her life. He knew that she wasn't talking uh, uh, talking and saying, feeling it in her shondo on a Sunday and saying another SH word on Monday. He knew that she treated people with respect. He knew that she operated in love. He knew that she led with the love of God. He knew that she was faithful and just. He knew that she was going to follow instruction. And as a result of that, anybody that she asked for a favor was going to give it to her. Put this at a point. When you bear fruit, favor finds you. Mm, that's good. When you bear fruit, favor finds you. How many of us wake up on Monday? We're in church, we're rolling, we're speaking in tongues, and we should have bought a Honda, and, and, but the boss better not pop off on Monday. We're, we're, we're right here on this very app. We're, 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 we're going live in church. Amazing, spirit-filled worship. Amazing, spirit-filled word. But we choose to use our other words on Monday. 
It does you no good to speak in tongues on Sunday, but you can't say a nice word speaking in English on Monday. It doesn't make sense. We're not bearing any fruit. When we bear fruit, favor finds us. When we bear fruit, this is evidence that we have the oil. Oh my God. When we bear fruit, this is evidence that we have the oil. The church in today's society has a, has a bad rap. Has a bad rap because there's too many Christians not bearing fruit. We, 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 claim, we claim to be Christians. We claim to display. And I need y'all to hear my heart on this one. I, I, I feel this. We claim to be Christians. We claim to be a reflection of the love that Jesus Christ did. But every time, every time that we, we go outside the will of God, we give him another lash. 40 wasn't enough. He's still taking lashes for our sins because we refuse to bear fruit. Every time we curse somebody out, we, he takes another lash. Every time we go over Johnny's house at 10 p.m. and that's not your husband, he takes another lash. Every time. you, uh, you this, it's, it's, it's just a little drugs. He takes another lash. And my Savior, your Savior does this willingly. Because we refuse to bear fruit. And every time that we don't bear fruit, every time we step outside of purpose, every time we step outside of the will of God, every time we sin, he takes another one. The, the will of God can't advance on earth because we won't bear fruit. This is, this is a simple matter. This is a simple matter. I'm, 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 not, I'm not asking. Jesus is not asking you to be perfect. We get that. He's asking you to love your neighbor. He's asking you to forgive your neighbor. He's asking you to not be a thief. He's asking you to exercise empathy and grace. Do you know the same empathy and grace that we expect from him? He's not asking you for anything to be perfect. And, and, and for us to not bear fruit, for us to not Acknowledge the oil is to say that he went to the cross for no reason. Is is to say that he came down, lived a blameless life for no reason. Every time that we don't acknowledge, every time that our fruit isn't shown. She had the oil the entire time. You have the oil the entire time. Even when God seems his furthest. Even when you can't make sense out of what's going on in your life. Even when you can't make sense out of where you're going to pay your next bill from. Even when you can't find a place to eat. God said, I am here. And though the situation around you has left you feeling empty. Though the house of the Holy Spirit seems empty, you still have oil. So she went into her house, verse four. She goes into her house and she shut the doors behind her. And, and, and this is the people that I'm talking to right now. She goes into her house and she closes the door behind her. Put this in a point. God's blessings are for benefit and not boasting. God's blessings are for benefit and not boasting. In today's society, so many of us, so many of us, we get a blessing, we get a word, we get a new car, we get a promotion, we get a new house, we get a job, we, 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 we can put our children in a better school, we can move to a better financial location, we move to a different tax bracket, and the first thing that we do is boast about it. The first thing that we do is post it on social media. But 
I'm, I'm more interested. God is more interested in the people who recognize what the blessing is for. The blessing is for benefit. The blessing came as a result of you being on your knees. The blessing came as a result of you seeking his face. The blessing came as a result of you staying in his presence. The blessing came as a result of you bearing fruit. The blessing came as a result of you finding yourself faithful and faithful. The blessing came because you were in a secret place. The Bible says that those that hide themselves, those that dwell in the secret place of the Lord shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You want your deliverance? You want your healing? You want your prosperity. You want the blessings. You want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. It's time to get into the secret place. It's time to get to a place, at places that you don't like to talk about at parties, the places where you can do the ugly cries, the places where it's time to seek God's face. It's time for you to get on your knees in your secret place. Shut the door so nobody can see it. It's not about the blessing. It's about the effort. It's about the bond that you build. It's not about the blessing. It's about the bond that you're building with God. Father, in your word, you called, your, you called yourself Jehovah Jireh. Father, in your word, you called yourself Jehovah Nisi. Father, in your word, you call yourself Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Rapha. That means that you heal, you provide, and you will fight my battles for me. But it's not until I start to shut the doors and get some people out of my... Okay, it's time to get some people out of your life, the spectators. I cause you to reposition your mindset. I cause you to reposition your faith. Feeling guilty about the opinions of others. I cause you to, to reposition your faith. God said, if you were in your secret place, it literally says it, Psalm 91 and 1. Psalm 91 and 1, those that dwell in the secret place of the Lord shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I'm protected. I'm protected. I am covered. I don't have to worry about healing in my body. I don't have to worry about uh, sickness. And, and, and God's going to bring me out of it. And I need somebody to take that Hebrew boy's anointing. God will deliver me from this. And even if he doesn't, I'm going to praise him because I know he has the ability to do so. This is what acknowledging the oil looks like. This is what acknowledging the oil looks like. Here's why, here's why Elisha knew that God was about to show up. Here's why he knew. Because remember that this woman's husband was Obadiah. Obadiah was breaking the literal law, but it was a kingdom investment. It was a kingdom investment for his family. We have to realize that, that when it comes down to us being blessed, when it comes down to us being healed, when it comes to us being delivered, there's going to take some investment. And here's where, as, as the leader of your household, here's where, as uh, uh, the supporter of a household, here's where being a part of a household, here's what that looks like. It's about making the kingdom investment because we realize that not only was the woman benefiting from the pouring of the oil, but her sons were too. Some of us got children that need some kingdom investment. Some of us got nieces and nephews that need some kingdom investment. Some of us are praying for our uncles and aunties. Some of us are praying for our grandparents. Some of us are praying for somebody who would never hear the word of God, but they need the kingdom investment. And this is why it's important for you to dwell in that secret place. This is why it's important for you to continue making deposits because when God makes deposits and when God gives you the return on your kingdom investment, God shows up and shows out. Abundance is the nature of God. Oh my God. The, blessing, the blessings that we get are not for us. The blessings that we get don't belong to us. Why? This is why God deals in abundance. This is why God deals in abundance. God's going to pay you back for the sacrifice that you made, and then he's going to give you enough to bless other people. My God. He, so she goes in there, and she, she, she employed her sons. As she was pouring, once the, once the jar got full, one son would take it apart, and another son was bringing her another empty vessel. So, so I, I got questions. Y'all know on, on my platform, I tell you that you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. I had to do some investigating. Why, why didn't Elisha 
perform this miracle himself. This is Elisha who split the seas. This is Elisha who's brought back the dead. This is Elijah who's multiplied food. Oh, go check the video out on the page, right? I told the story of how Jesus remixed Elisha and Elijah and Elisha's uh, miracles when he multiplied the food. Shall do, Jada. We uh, we why didn't he perform the miracle himself? But it's because. It's because it's one thing to go to church and hear things from the preacher, but it's something completely different when you have to live it out yourself. It's, it's, it's one thing to hear the word coming from my mouth. It's one thing to hear the word from your grandparents' mouth. It's one thing to hear the words from your parents' mouth, but it's not until you have to put some work in yourself that you could truly appreciate the abundance that God is showing. She had to do this herself because she had to make her own investment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how anointed your husband is. It doesn't matter how anointed your wife is. It doesn't matter uh, how many nations your wife preached to. It doesn't matter how many nations. It doesn't matter how many souls came to Christ under your husband's anointing. It does not matter. What has to happen is you have to make an investment for yourself. Elisha, could could he, he could have easily. Give me the oil. The crazy thing about this is that the, the, the oil, if you go back and read the Hebrew on this, when she said, I have nothing but a pot of oil. If you go back and read the Hebrew, it actually translates to flask of oil. She had her husband's oil. In other words, it's in very important who you create soul ties with. It's very important who you choose to bond with. It's very important who you allow to speak into and over your life. It's very important that you use your spirit of discernment. Why? Because anything that that person has will transfer it to you. He gave her children. He gave her a house. He gave her debt. He gave her oil. Do you start to see the trend what's happening here? Everything, both positive and negative, transfers to who you choose to build a bond with. My God. We have to be very careful of who we allow access to us. This is why, this is why he told him to shut the doors. Your life, your drama ain't for everybody's view and pleasure. God never intended for you to be the source of gossip. God never intended for you to be the tea in somebody else's group chat. God never intended for you to be run down by anybody. This is why I have to close the doors and get in that secret place and let the shadow of the Almighty hide me. Verse 6. And it came to pass that, that when the vessels were full, that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is no more. And the oil stopped. Put this in a point. The spirit flows as your faith goes. The spirit flows as your faith goes. In other words, God can only meet you where you are. God can only meet you in accordance to what's available for him. Right. In order for in order for us to bear fruit, in order for us to live in the will of God, it takes both faith and works. But when the son said there was no more empty vessels, the oil stopped. What does this mean? What does this mean to you? It, it, it simply means that this woman exercised some faith by going to the, to, the, to the man of God. She received instruction. She was obedient to that instruction. And now the opportunity... The opportunity now presents itself for her to live in abundance. Verse 7... Verse seven, then he told, uh, she told a man of God and he said, go sell the oil, pay the debt and live off the rest. What is it? What, she had, she, not only did, did she, did he pay what was owed? This is what Jesus did for us. He paid what was owed, but now it's up to us to live off the rest. It's up to us to, to take advantage. It's up to us to live in accordance with God's wishes inside of God's will. And, and, and here's the thing. 
Again, the blessings don't belong to us. When, when God gives us anything, it doesn't matter. Breath. When he gives us gifts, when he gives us talents, when he gives us um, a, a calling, when he gives us a specific anointing, when he gives us talent in a specific area, that area is an investment by him into you to be returned. We've all heard the story about uh, uh, God gives seed to the sowers. We heard the story or the parable that Jesus said about the men that, uh, that the farmer gave talents to, right? Both, pe uh, both people doubled it except for the one that saved it. Don't be like the person with the talent. When I'm talking talent, I'm talking coins. I'm talking money. Don't be like the person who hides it because you're afraid of losing it. This is a poverty mindset. That, 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 that person in the Bible hid that talent because he was afraid to lose the investment. But God said, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. This is anointing. This is prophetic. This is a promise. God has given you these gifts and these talents to share with the rest of the world. Why? Because he's invested this in you and his return on investment should be the souls that go back to him. It should be the people that go back to him. It should be the people who witness his power for the first time. It should be people who witness his glory for the first time. He gave you talent and gifts for the drug dealer who's seen nothing inside of a church since the last funeral that he went to. He gave it to you for the drug addict who can't seem to shake the addiction, but when they see the power of God, it's gone. He gave it to you for the alcoholic that's always talking to you about God. And now you talking to me, you made this investment in me. Now let me talk to you. Come here and drink. Put that bottle down and come drink of this water of life. My God. It's, it's, for, it's for that abusive mother. It's for the father that tried to buy your love. It's for the cousin that touched you. It's for the... Okay, 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 okay. Your blessings aren't for you. God in his entire existence, has never opened the door for anybody. Watch this. The opportunity, the opportunity is for him to show himself. God opens the door for himself. Exodus, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. God used Moses to part the Red Sea, but it was to show his power. Abraham, old age beyond natural comprehension of being able to have a child but it was for God to show his power the descendant of Abraham the grandson of Abraham uh, Jacob he ended up with a name change and a limp because he literally got into a wrestling match with God redemption was always in the plan but God had to show his power even, even when we do bad, even when we disqualify ourselves, even when we take ourselves outside of purpose, outside of the will of God, God still gives us an opportunity. When Saul sinned against God, God left him as king for 42 years, giving him an opportunity to repent and turn from his wicked ways, but he didn't. And so God said, I had to move on from this, but he left him in power for 42 years. It was the rain. He anointed David and David still had to wait 15 years because God is just that good. Father, I'm a liar. I'm not worthy of you. God said, come anyway. God, I, I, I'm, I'm addicted to porn. I'm not worthy. God said, come anyway. I've, I've stabbed some people in the back. I, I, haven't, I haven't been the best behaved person. God said, that's okay. Come anyway. Just because your house is empty, just because your heart is empty, it doesn't mean that the oil stops flowing if you just believe. God, I'm a thief. God said, come anyway. God, I'm a murderer. God said, come anyway. I've done that before. This is a simple matter. This is a simple matter. God, I'm an adulterer. God, God is so God. God is so God. He's the Alpha and Omega. Which means that when he anointed David as king, 
he saw Bathsheba's bathwater being poured at the same time. My God. When he, when he the, chose Moses to deliver the children of Israel, he saw the disobedience anyway. When he, when, when Jesus was walking and he chose Peter and he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. He saw Peter denying him. He, he, when he picked Judas and allowed him to follow him and, 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 and he, he he knew that Judas was a thief. He knew that Jesus was money hungry. He knew that Judas was possessed by the spirit of mammon, but he said, that's okay, come anyway. And I'm so good of a God that I'm gonna let you hold the money. When, when, when he chose Solomon and he gave him all the wisdom, he knew that, that Solomon was going to sin against him. When he created Samson to be born on the face of this earth to bring the smoke to the Philistines, he knew that Samson wasn't going to obey him, but he chose him anyway. Because, because when God gives oil, the oil will flow as long as you believe. In Psalms 51, David was at a low point in his life. He, he had just had Absalom with Bathsheba and he, he, he had sinned against God and he knew that he was outside of the will of God. This is where that scripture comes from. Psalms 51 where he says, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a steadfast spirit. Renew in me a right spirit. Sanctify me. Take anything away, but don't take your presence. He was, at a low, he was at the lowest point of his life. And he was still calling out for the oil. He was still calling out for the oil. And if you take nothing else from anything that was said here today, this is, this is message one. I don't know how long God's going to keep this series up, but this is message one. We're dealing with oil. If you take nothing else from what I said today, acknowledge the oil. Acknowledge the power of the oil. Acknowledge when you're in a desperate situation, then it's time for us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. When you're in a hopeless situation, it's time to look to the hills. When you are in a painful situation, an uncomfortable situation, it is time to look to the hills from which comes your help. Some of us are looking for miracles today. Some of us are in that desperate place today. Some of us are, are, are in that place where we don't know where our next meal is coming from. Some of us are, are deciding uh, whether or not we're going to pay the light bill or put gas in our car. The walk that we've chosen to walk the walk of, of love, the, the choice to fall in love with God is not going to be an easy walk. It is not supposed to be an easy walk because if, if it were easy, then you wouldn't have to acknowledge the oil. But if that's, if that's you today, I'm not, I don't know who's seeing this. I don't know who's watching this, but if this is you today and you're trying to, you need to desperately acknowledge the oil, God, you're saying, I'm just like these empty, I'm just like these empty vessels. I'm just like this widow's house. My husband is gone. The things that I've invested in haven't been able to fill me up. Today is your day for change. Today is your day to acknowledge the oil. Today is your day to look to the hills. Seek the voice and the face and the will and the perfect love of God. Today is your day. If that is you, if you're watching from the FYP, if you're in this chat and you're saying that's me, you don't have to make this public knowledge. You can be in your secret place. But what I'm about to do right now is I'm going to pray. And, 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 and if this is you, pray this prayer with me. And this is going to be you acknowledging the oil. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your oil. We thank you for being both Alpha and Omega. We thank you for the ability and the free will to love you. Let us not be fooled by materialistic possessions. Let us not be fooled into thinking that anything other than you can fill us up. I believe you. I thank you that the oil then turned to blood and that blood then flowed for me. I thank you for your son being sent to the cross and dying and resurrecting himself with all power in his hand. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe 
in the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And today, it is time for me to make my heart right. Today, I acknowledge that oil in Jesus' most precious and holy and mighty name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. You just made the best decision in your life. Acknowledge the oil. We will see y'all up next week. Next week, we will see y'all right back here where we're going to tackle the obedience piece. <laughs>